let's get into our next topic because we're talking about Lamar Jackson once again. Uh, the NFL has released a statement uh, where they basically said, it says in here, the statement goes, the NFLPA has informed us that a person by the name of Ken Francis, who is not an NFLPA certified agent, may be contacting clubs and attempting to persuade club personnel to enter into negotiations with or concerning Lamar Jackson, who is currently under a non-exclusive franchise tender with the Baltimore Ravens. And basically to not do it because it is illegal under Article 48 of the Collective Bargaining Agreement. So Lamar has got himself, reportedly, a non-NFLPA certified representative to try to make offers to him. And then Lamar clapped back by saying that he never, that this guy Ken Francis never uh, was negotiating for him. But that doesn't mean he doesn't call up other teams to see where their head's at. So, you know, it's something like that. Yeah. But this, this is a weird situation. It keeps getting weirder and weirder and weirder. So when it's all said and done, and we, we can talk about the process here in this topic. How do you think this contract situation works itself out? Wow. Well, we just talked about Lamar Jackson in our last seg segment uh, related to the Jets, but I think Lamar Jackson made a, a serious mistake. He should have gone and got himself an agent. He should have an agent. He's one of the best players in the NFL. An agent's fee is 3% at of most. the contract. At, at most. At most. 3%. Okay? 3% of 200 million bucks is six million bucks okay that's nothing that's zero <laughs> on a 200 million dollar guaranteed contract he could have had it okay and he didn't get it you need to have an agent this is complicated business okay the agent has a lot of contacts that you don't have uh lamar okay you should have gotten yourself an agent you made a mistake there you could still go get one why you came of this non, uh, you know, who, NFL non, PA non, certified. The, yeah, I can understand why the NFL doesn't like that. Any schmo could come in there and uh, could be, uh, you know. Uh, you were uh, I. A, you uh, and I could call yeah, for right. more. An unethical, <laughs> somebody who's really unethical. Some of the players are not that savvy when it comes to the business side of this game. So they, the NFL is trying to look out for their players by saying that these guys should be certified. I think that that's not an unreasonable request. Why the hell he went and found some guy who was not, uh, not certified? Probably because he said, I'll take 1%, right? Two million bucks. So Lamar said, wow, I saved $4 million. <laughs> but guess what, Lamar? You're never going to get the 200 million, <laughs> right? You're never going to get that 200 million. That's what you want to focus on. Get some professional help here. Get somebody who can get you that, that contract. So, you know, I think he's doing it partially. Because he's setting an example. He wants to show that the big machine of the NFL can be beat by one player doing this on his own. And I think the other players respect him for that, for trying to do it. But he's costing himself a lot of money by doing this. Yeah. The only way he could save himself now is, I think, the New York Jets. And I, I think that if the deal does not get done, if the Packers hold out and it doesn't get done by the trade dead, uh, by the uh, draft, the week of the draft, that you're going to see the tables are going to turn and uh, Aaron Rodgers is going to not be, he's, the Packers aren't going to rush it. The Jets are going to try to counter with uh, and get the leverage back by going after Lamar. Right. And I think that's what Lamar is waiting for to see if that happens. So you better have somebody there to help him get that deal done if it does happen. That's what I would say. It's such a weird situation. And Lamar is supposed to have this exclusive interview on his YouTube channel. And then after he posted about how, um, you know, this guy, Ken Francis, uh, never, uh, never negotiated for Lamar, he then comes out and, and starts promoting his, I guess, his travel workout system with his business partner, Ken Francis, about his, uh, it's, like, it's like a workout machine on a cart or something. I don't even understand it. Realistically, this is not a, this is not a mature way to handle this situation. He doesn't, he's one of the best players in the I NFL. I agree. I put him top three. Get yourself an agent, one of the best agents in the NFL, and then you're going to get what you want. Right. Yeah. And that, that's a mistake he's making. His situation's gone from bad to worse now. Oh, absolutely. It's gone from bad to worse. And I understand now he's even saying, I don't really want a fully guaranteed contract. Yeah. You know, why would he say that? Why not? Why not stick to with To try to get guns? an offer. To try to get yeah, an offer. Well, yeah, well, he may wind up, maybe he will get one. We'll see. But then- the, uh, I think the most likely outcome here 
is that the Jets wind up with Aaron Rodgers. Lamar Jackson doesn't get an offer from anybody. Stays with the Ravens? Stays with the Ravens, plays on the franchise tag for Ooh. $32 million bucks. Ooh, that's interesting. All right. Then next year, right. his leverage comes back. Right. Because then the Ravens know that they only have one more year with him on the franchise tag, and then they wouldn't get anything for him. Right. They get nothing. So he has more leverage. He's going to have lever He's going to have to play a year for thirty-two million bucks, and then get his leverage back. He'll probably get forty million, forty or so million on the franchise tag the second time around if they have to go that route. And then he'd probably get a hundred and fifty million dollar contract. So he'd still get all his money, but he's taking a lot more risk because he's got to stay healthy all that time and play. You know, at least fourteen, fifteen games a year to make that happen so and that might not happen based on what's happened the last two years right well he lost leverage he, he, his situation went from fantastic okay even after the first year he got hurt right right he was only out he was out four games right at the end he uh, should have signed he got a 200 five. million dollar guaranteed five. off of that even though some of the guarantees are a little hard to understand still got a 200 million dollar guarantee then. technically you should have signed it because then he got hurt again. His situation yep. went from excellent to not so good, right? And then he didn't. Uh, he didn't. He still didn't start, strike a deal. And now he's got this agent issue, and he's yep. saying, "I I don't really want a fully guaranteed contract." His situation has gone. It's gone downhill big time right now. Well, yeah. well, the Ravens could franchise tag him two more times. Yeah. So all the way up to 2025, they could franchise tag him, which would be if we're just going off. No, no, they can only do it for 23 and 24. No, they can do it for 25 as well, because because uh, this this is their first franchise tag. They can do it two other times. They can, they can franchise tag him for three times. I thought it was only once more. No, they, 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 they could do they could do it two more times. So yeah. if the Ravens, let's just say they they only offered him three years, 133 million fully guaranteed. Let's just say that was the base. That was the only number. No. Injury guarantees or some weird springing guarantee, which now they're just making up words here. If they just franchise tag him for three years, that's three years, $177 million guaranteed to Lamar Jackson for three years. Well, if he doesn't get hurt. Well, no, no, no. That's just, that's just the franchise tag. Number. I understand that. But why would they, if let's say he goes out and rips his knee up uh, in uh, this year, why would they franchise tag him next year? And, and it, right? th he's that, put that's himself, a good question. He put himself at a lot of risk. He could have had two hundred million dollars guaranteed, and he put, even if he got hurt, he would get twenty five million dollars. I think in that first, I, 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 in I that think contract, they, they offered the him comments. a contract that was unbelievable, and and he was made the mistake of looking at Deshaun Watson's contract, yes. okay, and said that's the new standard in the NFL, and it wasn't. He should have known that the Cleveland Clowns were the ones that. Yeah, made there we go. Right? They hey, were the ones, my name. They were the ones that made that deal, and that wasn't a deal anybody else in the world ever would have made. Right? I, I, and, and the, uh, never will make again. The either. owner said yeah. that. The owner said that. That uh, and I, I think the GM and the owner of the Ravens came out and said that, uh, like this screwed up negotiations with with Lamar when Deshaun Watson made this deal. By the way, Deshaun Watson has an agent who got him out of that like sexual assault massage random Sean situation Watson, he's the one that looks like the real genius here. oh he, he, he had he had himself an excellent agent yeah right he's got the right talent working for him yeah okay <laughs> and that's what they to, say right they got him out of that situation yeah, and, and, the, and the ravens another mistake they made they should have gotten the deal done with lamar before just sean watson got his deal they should have made a big deal with him then and you know what the browns might have saved money then <laughs> they might have saved money. Maybe. Uh, it's unbelievable. I, I can't. This is unbelievable. Well, I, I I brought this up on on what was it Monday show? The the Browns made that kind of an or they they made that offer to Deshaun Watson because they were desperate. They did not want to deal with Baker Mayfield anymore. They wanted to move off him rapidly, and Deshaun Watson's market was very very quickly uh, ascending. I think the Falcons were in on the Panthers. All these teams were in on Deshaun Watson. The Browns actually dropped out. Then they came back in and literally stole Deshaun Watson away from every other team. Well, it wasn't hard to steal him with $230 million I, 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 guaranteed. I agree. But here's where I think the Ravens actually like are looking at that saying, eh, that's them because the Ravens, I don't think, are desperate. The Jets are desperate. The Browns, was it last year or two years ago, were desperate. The Ravens have won and been successful and gone to multiple playoffs with Joe Flacco and won a Super Bowl with Trent Dilfer. Why, you may ask. It wasn't because of quarterback play. 
top five to top ten defense, and a great running game. What have the Ravens had since 2018? The number one rushing team and a top ten defense yeah, general. Lamar was one of the big reasons they had the top ten uh, top rushing game. I agree, game, right? but I think the Ravens may go into the season saying we could draft like a Max Duggan or a Stetson Bennett and still win some games because they won games with Anthony Brown and Tyler Huntley. It did not look pretty under any regard, but they still won games with Anthony Brown and uh, was mm-hmm. oh, oh, could have won that playoff game. With Tyler Huntley starting quarterback, yeah. if uh, was it Hubbard? I forgot who who took the fumble away. Ran ninety what ninety eight yards, whatever it was. If it wasn't because of that, the Browns made the the uh, the Ravens could have won that playoff game with Tyler Huntley at quarterback. And guess what? Tyler Huntley, I believe, would have had the same amount of playoff no, wins as the, Lamar Jackson. The, the Ravens have good coaches. They have a good head coach. They have they have they know that it's a team game and that they need to have good defense, good offense. It can't be just one guy out there winning for them. So I agree with you that if they lose out on Lamar, that that could be the end of the world for them. I don't. I, I, I don't they, think they'll they, think it's not the end of the world. Not, they won't think it's the end of the world. They'll so. beef up the run game. They'll beef up the defense. Yeah, yeah. Because that that's it's the same. It's the same ideology as the Patriots. Good, efficient run game and a tremendous defense. It, yeah. It's it's a vintage Steelers idea as well. In today's NFL, though, it doesn't work like that. So, not as well. Not as well. And it's very, very rare you see that type of success now, currently. Mm-hmm. But I think if, if, we're, if, we're, if I'm trying to answer the question posted as how do you think this contract situation works out, the Ravens are still the favorites to retain Lamar at plus 120. The Colts, as you recommended about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, are, I believe, plus 220. So they're number two. Well, so, I think that if Aaron Rodgers does some... If the Jets can't strike a deal with Aaron Rodgers uh, by the the Jets uh, going to skyrocket draft, those odds, I think they're going to they're going to pivot and move to Lamar to force the Packers' hand or land Lamar Jackson, uh, one or the other. I think I think as soon as uh, the, and the Jets have got the money to overpay. Yeah, I don't know why they haven't got the they, they made a huge mistake in not getting Aaron Rodgers' deal done before they put all these pieces in place that that make them look weak. Saying that they got to get Aaron Rodgers now. I I, uh, I I think it was to appease Aaron Rodgers by saying, "Look at the pieces we have." Okay, I'll go to New York, and then they didn't figure out how to get they, yeah, their well, first. You know, they could have brought those pieces in after they exactly, signed him. Exactly. They could have told him, "Look, what what do you want? You already told us you're what here you now. What do you want? We, we went and got these pieces now, yeah. and we can't get you, <laughs> huh? That, how does that work? <laughs> oh man." It's crazy. Lamar Jackson, do you think there's a chance Lamar sits out this year? It would kill his value, I think. Yeah. But also, well, it, you, it would make you a know what? The, the, if he sits out, can't can the Ravens still franchise tag him next year? Well, who what's his contract? I don't know. Would he become a free agent then? Yeah, it would, it would, be, it would be the same process as this year. They would franchise uh, you tend would be a free agent, but so they franchise. So they still tag. control him. They still control him even if he sits out this year. The Ravens still control him. We ought to look into that. I don't know what the answer I, is there. I think Lam- no. Lamar needs to sign his franchise tag. I believe. I and then he could sit out. I if he signs it, he could sit. Uh, technically, he could hold out. Yeah, technically he can. But if he doesn't sign it, I'm not sure what happens there. We should figure that out. Yeah, we, we, yeah. We're, That's we're, important. We're, That's a very important. We're point. gonna look into that because I don't know. I don't know if he's already signed. I it, Lamar. I don't think will sign a franchise tag. It doesn't seem like his well, type. If of mentality. he could be, if he could be a free free agent by sitting out for one year, he might do it. Maybe he would do it. The Rams could just franchise because tag he won't him be, again. He'll be a healthy. He'll be healthy, and everyone That's knows true. what he can do. Right. So that might be the least. He it costs himself some money. But he yeah. could probably make it up. He could probably make it up with the deal that he would get as a free agent. So we should know. Yeah. We don't know that. We should know that. That's important. I, I, I do think that's a very important fact. <laughs> if he, I don't think he signed it, does that make him technically a free agent? He's not free now. Right now, he's not a free bird. But right? if if he, if he doesn't sign the franchise tag by the season start. That I think that's a whole different situation. I don't know. We don't know the answer. I don't think. I don't think. Then technically, the the Ravens still retain him because he's not technically under contract with them. That that I gotta look into that. That that's. I think that's a very very interesting part about. Yeah. That, that I, I'm gonna look into that. Hi everybody! Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, if you want to check out the full episode, make sure you click the I in the top right hand corner right now. 
If you want to listen to this show anywhere you go, make sure you go to anchor.fm slash the Harvey Hour or anywhere you get your podcasts.